Hi, I'm Sven from B Music. Today we're gonna make a modern style user interface for our My Simple Polyblab synth. How should it look alike? Let's first take a look to our My Simple Polyblab synth definition. There are six controllers. One for the selection of a waveform. This can be realized by a combo box. Attack, decay, sustain and release. We can use sliders for it. And a big dial for level. In addition, let's display the waveform scaled by the level. Let's start. Copy and paste the My Simple Polyblab synth. Download it from the GitHub repository if you haven't got it yet. Rename it. A shorter name. My SPP synth. And rename the files. And the URIs and the file names in the manifest. The plugin definition and in the plugin CPP file. Then get the bWidgets toolkit as described in the last video and build it. If you already have installed bWidgets, then of course you can use this one. Now we can extend this existing plugin by a user interface. Start with the definition in the manifest. Here we will add the UI, like we did it with the MyAmp plugin. Copy and paste the plugin URI definition. Add UI and it will be an UI X11 UI. The prefix UI is not defined yet, so we take it from the LV2 documentation. The binary file for the UI will be myspbsynth underscore UI. And we can use the same definition file for the also. In the plugin definition TTL file, we firstly define the UI prefix. Copy and paste the UI part from the manifest, extended by the idle interface which we need as a required feature and as extension data. And we have to tell the plugin to use this UI definition for the user interface, by UI colon UI and the UI URI. In the plugin CPP file, there are a few definitions, which we will need for the user interface too. These are control ports, control limits and port groups. So let's move control ports to a separate header file. Ensure that they are only loaded once using the ifn def and define macro block, or use pragma once, and include it. And do the same with control limits, take care it depends on control ports, and array as it is in a standard array, and utility as it uses standard pair, and port groups. To the user interface, lazy programmers copy and paste. So we will copy and paste the UI, HPP and CPP files from my MP widgets and rename it to my SPP synth underscore UI respectively. In the UI HPP file, rename the class to my MP SPP synth UI. And now we have got six plus one widgets. Waveform as a B widgets combo box. We need to include combo box. Attack is a slider, a horizontal slider with a value. Thus, a bewitched value H slider. And include it. The same for decay, sustain and release. Level will be a bewitched value dial, which is already included. For convenience, we can store pointers to these six control port widgets in an array. Why? I will show it later in this video. For control underscore NR, we need control ports. And what is the plus one widget? A bewitched image for the display. Also include image. And we don't need a user-defined destructor, as it was and will be empty. But we need a method to draw the waveform. Draw waveform. Inside the UI CPP file, we firstly adapt the include and rename all class names. In the constructor, we initialize the parent class window with a bigger window size, 600 times 200. Initialize the waveform combo box by its position on the top middle, its extents, the content as an initializer list, and one as a default value. Take care, combo box list indexing always starts with one, not with zero, as zero is reserved for unselected. The attack slider is initialized like a dial by its position on the right part of the UI, its extents, the initial value, take it from the plugin definition, and the lower and the upper limit which we defined as pairs in the controller limits. So we need to include it and add controller limits, control attack and dot first and dot second respectively. The same for decay, sustain, release 
and level, which will be a big dial on the left. And the image display is initialized only by its position, just below the combo box, and its extents. Now the members of the widget array need to be linked to our controller widgets, step by step. But what is the advantage for this helper array? We can iterate through it like this, and only need to declare the jobs to do only once, instead of for each controller widget. For all widgets except waveform, we have to switch off clicking, only tracking and scrolling. The class widget itself does not support clickable, but all dials and sliders do. Therefore we can safely dynamic cast to support the ability be widgets clickable pointer. Also change the widget for ground colors to be styles whites. This will fit better. Note, this can also be done by defining styles and themes. All widgets shall be linked to value changed callback. Therefore, w error set callback function, the event and the value changed callback as in my MP widgets. And finally add the controller widgets. Now we only need to take hands on the display image. Create an empty image for a defined status using create image. Note, every widgets image can store different images, one for each status. And the default status is be style status normal. Contour waveform and add the display by its reference. Finally set the background. I already provided the file. This is all for the constructor. As we remove the user-defined destructor from the class header, we have to remove its definition here too. A few changes in Pokemon, as we now have got more than one controller to take care of. Calculate the index of the controller number, which is port index minus the port index of port control, as this is defined in port groups, we have to include it too. Switch control number, case control waveform, then waveform set value and the value plus one. Why plus one? The first index in the control box list has always got the value 1, not 0. But the plugin sends 0, as this is what we defined for the first index in the plugin TTL file. And we can handle all other cases in the default section. Check if control number is in the allowed range, then define the widget we caught, and set the value using set value. Take care, the class B widgets widget does not support values, but all sliders and dials do this via inheriting a valuable typed double. Thus, we can safely dynamic cast the respective widget to valuable typed double pointer. Also a bit of work to do with value changed callback. It's not only called by a dial widget, but also by sliders and a combo box. Therefore, we take the base class widget for get widget, and adapt this for get main window too. The value, which we will later send to the host using the write function, we get from the respective widget from the event. But which widget is widget? We have to test it by iterating through the widget array, by the index, as we need the index anyway. So we define control and R for the index outside the for loop. Iterate from zero to below control underscore and R in a for loop. W will be the respective widget for each iteration. And if we found a matching widget, we have to check for our special case, the waveform combo box. In this case, value is UI arrow waveform get value minus one. In all other cases, it is widget arrow get value itself, but widget cast it to valuable type double pointer. And don't forget to stop the iteration if we've got a match to preserve the control and R. Finally, the write function is called with port control plus control and R and the value, of course. Now we have to define the draw waveform method. It's a bit of Cairo programming. First we get access to the Cairo image surface of the display image by get image surface and the state is normal. Clear this surface using the utilities Cairo plus function Cairo plus surface clear. Then we create a Cairo context CR for this surface. And we need to know the display image width W, which we get by Cairo image surface get width. And the height H by Cairo image surface get height. We need the level and get it by level get value and the waveform index by waveform get value minus one. Then set the color to white for drawing waveform lines and the line width to two. Now we can draw waveforms for each condition. Switch F, which is a waveform index, case waveform sign. This is defined in waveform HPP, so we include this. Then Cairo move to the origin, which is X at zero and Y at half of the height, the baseline. Then we draw lines for the sine wave step by step 32 steps should be fine for visualization. A simple for loop from double x is 0 to 1 by 1 by 32 steps. 
and chiral line 2CR with x times width, and y is the half height minus the half height times sine of 2 times pi times x and times the level value. Don't forget the break. For the triangle wave, again chiral move to the origin, line to the top at 0.25 times width, line to the bottom at 0.75 times width, and back to the baseline at 1.0 times width. Break. The square wave, here we have got two more points. Two at x0, two at x 0.5 times width, and two at x1 times width. Break. And the saw wave, two points at x0, and two points at x1 times width. Break. For the noise, we have to draw some random content, in curly brackets as we have to define a local random number generator. We take the one as in the key class, include random in C time, and initialize R and D and dist. Chiral move to the origin. And in a for loop, 4 double x is 0 to less than 1, in let's say 160 steps. We draw lines to x times width, and y is the baseline minus 0.5, times height, times the level value, times the random value, which we get from dist R and D. For optimization you can calculate the values once in the constructor, store the value in an array, and error access here. And Cairo line back to the baseline at x is 1 times width. Break. Default break. Draw the Cairo context to the Cairo surface by Cairo stroke CR. Cairo destroys CR as it did not need it anymore. And update the display image. This was a diligent but routine piece of work. Now it needs to be called from value changed callback, if either the waveform or the value has been changed. So we add a condition. If W is UI waveform or UI level, then UI draw waveform. In Instantiate, we only need to adapt the plugin URI. And in the UI descriptor, the UI URI. That's it. Time to compile. Same procedure and same parameters as in my MB widgets. Only adapt the file names and we use G++ for all files. First compile and link the plugin DSP file. Then compile the UI file and link the UI file. Create an LV2 target directory and copy the shared object binaries, the TTL files and the background image. Now we can test it. Feel free to play around. And feel free to improve it. For instance by logarithmic scaling for attack, decay and release. There's an option in B-Widgets for dials and sliders to do this. In the next video we will make a vintage style user interface. And we will add a piano roll. And make the user interface resizable.